Yo what's up, Ezek here and this is the Samsung S20 Ultra 5G. So by the way, this phone pala was released way back 2 years ago, 2020. And this is the first Samsung flagship phone na may Ultra sa name niya. At syempre, kapag sinabi natin Ultra, that means yung isang bagay or isang phone is talagang pang malakasan na or pang malupitan. However, talaga nga bang Ultra ang Samsung S20 Ultra 5G? Tara, pag-usapan natin. Simulan natin sa design. So by the way guys, no, I'll be honest, the first time I got to use this phone, I was actually kind of expecting na it would feel more premium than what it is since this phone is Samsung top of the line flagship phone way back 2020. Kaso nga lang, I was wrong. Yung first impression ko, I thought I was just using a budget phone since yung mismong texture and feels ng mismong phone ay made out of plastic. However, nung chine ko specifications online, I was surprised to know na this phone pala ay may Gorilla Glass 6 na housing at may aluminum build sa mismong frame contrary to how I felt sa phone na parang plastic lang naman. Anyways, despite the plastic texture ng mismong phone, napansin ko na it kinda has some heft into it or medyo may kabigatan yung mismong phone and that's one sign authentic or hindi fake yung phone you guys. So, that's nice. So, moving on sa mismong parts naman. So, sa right side, we have the volume and power button, SIM slot, and SD card tray on top. Tapos, the speaker and microphone below with the charging port. Tapos, sa likod naman, we have a huge quad camera setup na, spoiler alert, one of the sensors ay may 108 megapixels and 100 times optical zoom. So, ayun. Pag-uusapan natin yan later sa camera department. So, that's nice. So yun guys, overall design-wise for me to be honest, hindi ko siya ganong gusto kasi wala siyang depth or lakas ng dating to catch anyone's attention. Actually nga guys, kung di ko man alam na Samsung S20 Ultra ito na flagship, I would definitely, definitely consider this phone a budget phone na you can only purchase for around 10,000 pesos, more or less. However guys, no disregarding how it looks, this phone naman ay may IP68 water resistance na wala sa mga budget phones. At the same time, it is capable of wireless charging. So ayun, okay na rin naman. So yun. Moving on with our next aspect, display. So just for context, this phone ay may 6.9 inches dynamic AMOLED 2X display na may HDR10+, 1400 nits peak brightness, 1440 by 3200 pixels, and may 512 pixels per inch. So in this case naman bumawa yung S20 Ultra after natin i-roast yung mismong design niya. Kasi yung mismong display specifications ng phone is not just for show kasi it even translates yung mismong visual experience natin with the phone. Pati yung mismong phone guys no, ay talagang malaki having 6.9 inches na almost 7 inches na size na may small punch hole cutout which I prefer more than most notches or front camera cutout sa ibang mga phone. Also guys, no curve din pala yung mismong edge ng phone which is common for Samsung flagship at dahil dito, mas talaga nakapagbigay ito ng more immersive and premium experience tuwing ginagamit yung mismong phone. Actually guys, no sa case ko, talagang mas naging exponential yung kagandahan whenever I watch YouTube videos with this phone. And that's apparently again because of the humongous size and yung mismong top of the line specifications or display specifications. And by the way guys, no fun fact, ito pala yung pinakaunang Samsung flagship phone na may 1 20Hz. And for those of you na hindi pa gano familiar sa refresh rate, basically the higher the refresh rate, mas magiging smooth yung pag-navigate natin sa mismong phone. However, one caveat lang we can only use 120Hz if and only if kapag binaba natin yung display specifications to 1080p Full HD. At para sa akin naman is fine kasi I would rather have high refresh rate na may 1080p Full HD over 60Hz na may slow animation na may high display. Kasi Full HD 1080p combining with high refresh rate na 120Hz is actually really good naman guys. And also, this phone pala ay may ultrasonic fingerprint sensor which for me, it's not really that ultrasonic guys kasi comparing to other phones, medyo may kabagalan siya. But you know, who cares? It's fine kasi it works naman anyway so that's nice. But ayun, anyways, aside from that, display in general is really decent and great. Nothing more, nothing less so that's nice. So next naman we have performance. So by the way, just for reference, this phone pala has two variants namely Snapdragon and Exynos. But since I'm in the Philippines and I have the Korean variant, the version I have with me is the Exynos 990 na may 12GB RAM and 256GB of storage. So that's nice. So for obvious reasons, pang malakas ang talaga yung performance specifications ng Samsung S20 Ultra, mapakahit anong social media man yan in general like Facebook which basically consumes most of my time. And talagang with using this phone, napaka superb ng experience sa kayang ibigay ng phone, especially yung napakaganda at napaka helpful na 120Hz refresh rate. Even by means sa mismong gaming experience, it also excels sa aspect na ito. Trust me guys, sobrang smooth ng playing experience ko with this phone. Kahit sobrang graphic intensive ng game, kayang kayang i-handle ng processor or 
smartphone yung mismong game na yun. At the same time na bonus factor din pala yung big screen na napaka immersive which is very appealing for most gamers who are into large screens or humongous screens. Kaso nga lang major problem na napansin ko sa unit ko, nagtitermo throttle yung phone or nagiinit kahit ilang minutes ko palang nagagamit yung mismong phone. Hindi ko lang ganun sure kung sa phone ko lang yun or same goes to most S20 Ultra out there. However, sa case ko kasi guys no, nakagamit na rin ako ng ibang Samsung S lineups or flagship lineups like the Samsung S6, S9 Plus, S10 and this phone Samsung S20 Ultra and in my case, in most of those phones apparently, magkakapareho sila nagiinit. Kaya I suggest to prevent overheating or thermo throttle. Make sure to lessen yung exposure natin sa mismong phone prevent overcharging and huwag masyado mag gaming guys sa hot environment. So yun, generally speaking no, I have no problems to be honest sa mismong performance ng phone. Still very dependable and recommendable even after 2 years so that's nice. So next naman we have camera. So by the way no, the Samsung S20 Ultra pala has a quadruple camera setup so the main camera sensor has 108 megapixels, 48 megapixels for the periscope telephoto, 12 megapixels ultra wide and 0.3 megapixels for the depth sensor. Tapos this camera pala has 100 times optical zoom so that's nice. Tapos the front camera naman 40 megapixels f-stop 2.2 tapos may max video resolution na 4K at 60 FPS. So actually guys no common misconception natin sa mga phones na may mataas na megapixel count or more specifically in this phone's case na may 108 megapixels, we are not actually shooting kaagad na 108 megapixels. This phone only has a default sensor na 12 megapixels same with most iPhones. And for me to be honest, I can confidently say na sobrang lupet ng camera ng phone na to. Pag pinakita nyo ako ng pictures from this phone without me knowing na galing ito sa Samsung S20 Ultra, I would certainly say na those photos ay galing sa isang DSLR or mirrorless camera. And also guys, no, you may toggle the 108 megapixels from the settings and for me no, by the looks of it, I cannot see any quality difference. Siguro very minimal lang. However, it doesn't justify the difference between 12 megapixels and 108 megapixels. So moving on, this phone din pala ay may ultra wide sensor which for me is great naman. However, not that superior compared to an iPhone. Basically, parang same lang sila ng quality or ng level. Moreover, we have a ported camera which for me naman is nice. Kaso nga lang napansin ko na, in some cases yung subject or subjects tend to fall out of focus or more specifically no, hindi technically in focus yung subject precisely. Furthermore, this phone din pala ay may 100 times optical zoom which is nasabi ko naman kanina. However, for me, napansin ko na it's just basically a marketing jargon which is basically used to persuade people to buy this phone. But ayun, anyways, it's not that good naman and I don't commonly use naman mga ultra wide sensor or mali mga ultra zoom lens naman or sensors na mga Android phone so ayun. So moving on by means naman sa mismong front cam, it's actually pretty good guys no, the 40 megapixels does its job nicely. But ayun, anyways, here are more shots to see it for yourself. Hey what's up, Ezek here. So I'm currently filming using the Samsung S20 Ultra 5G 40 megapixels sa front cam, 1080p at 60fps. By the way guys, napakilala ko na sa inyo si Archer. So, this is Archer. Archer, say hi. Hi. And this is Trixie guys. So, ayan. Hi ka sa vlog. Ayan. Anyways, vlog test of the Samsung S20 Ultra. So, tools. So next naman we have battery. So by the way, this phone pala has 5,000 mAh and to be honest, oh guys, alam ko may mga malupit tayong specifications and all of those stuff, kaso nga lang, powering the phone with just only 5,000 mAh, I don't think that's practical enough. To simplify guys, no, the battery is fine, don't get me wrong, kaso nga lang, comparing or in line with most mainstream phones, it kinda fall short nga lang. Actually guys, no, medyo nahirapan na akong gamitin yung phone all throughout the day, which I may do so easily sa iba kong mga phones, even my iPhone 11 guys, and iPhone, iPhone 11. Pero guys, no, huwag kayo manghinayang to keep up with that, this phone ay may 45 watts fast charger. And in my case guys, no, sa paggamit ko ng 45 watts fast charger, napansin ko na, it is super very blazingly fast. Napansin ko na based on my own findings or my own data, sobrang bilis ng pag-charge ng phone as mentioned kanina na kaya mo full charge yung phone within less than 1 hour. And that's something that we look forward to and a nice feature ng isang phone so that's nice. At panghuli naman we have 
the price. So by the way guys, so if you plan to buy the Samsung S20 Ultra, you will be needing to invest around 20 to 23,000 pesos and for that price range for me, quick answer, yes guys, sobrang sulit pa rin na Samsung S20 Ultra by means of display, design, performance, camera, and battery. Halos same price lang naman yung iPhone 11 and Samsung S20 Ultra and it actually depends on what phone you want to go for. Kung gusto nyo ng iPhone, then go for the iPhone 11 or 11 Pro. Tapos kung gusto nyo naman ng Android phone, then go for the Samsung S20 Ultra. So, that's nice. So yun guys, that's pretty much my review about the Samsung S20 Ultra for this year 2022. If you learned or enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe in this YouTube channel. So, thank you very much. So yun guys, that's been it. Catch you in the next one. Peace.